will come. In this lecture we are going to discuss about the propagation studies for the wave equation and with this lecture we are going to end our discussion on wave equation. Outline for this lecture is as follows, first we discuss about propagation of confined disturbances, we will mention what they are later and then propagation of singularities and we give a few results on decay of solutions without proof, propagation of confined disturbances. So, we are going to study propagation properties associated to the Cauchy problem where the wave equation is homogeneous and we have the Cauchy data phi and psi which is confined. It means the functions phi and psi are compactly supported. As Cauchy data we choose functions phi and psi to be piecewise constant functions with such functions the computations are easy and transparent. We have to bear in mind that the corresponding solutions given by the formulae like d'Alembert, Poisson, Kirchhoff are to be interpreted as weak solutions or weaker solutions that is why I put this them in quotes. Of course, we have introduced the notion of weak solutions uh, in the lecture 5.6. Considering piecewise constant Cauchy data will also help us in analyzing propagation of singularities in the Cauchy data. Let us see an example dimension 1, one dimensional wave equation, psi is identically equal to 0 and phi is such that it is equal to 1 on the interval 0, 1, 0 otherwise outside the interval 0, 1 function is 0. So, it is a discontinuous function but piecewise constant function 0 up to 0, 1 from 0 to 1, once again 0 from 1 to infinity that is the function phi. The support of phi is precisely 0, 1. So, we are assuming that psi is identically equal to 0. Therefore, as we see the support of the Cauchy data is the interval 0, 1 which is a compact set. Yeah, support of phi is 0, 1, psi is identically equal to 0. Now, solution to the Cauchy problem given by D'Alembert formula is this. Fix a t naught, we would like to find the support of u of x comma t naught. So, we want to study the support of the solution to the wave equation at a time t equal to t naught. Fix a t naught then what we need is u of x naught x comma t naught right. So, it depends on x minus c t naught and x plus c t naught. Therefore, we will find out what is phi of x minus c t naught and phi of x plus c t naught. We can easily see that this formula hold because phi is equal to 1 whenever the argument is in the interval 0 1. The argument is in interval 0 1 means x is in this interval. Similarly here this argument is in the interval 0 1 means x is in this interval. So, note that u of x t naught is non-zero for all those x for which x is in this interval or this interval. Thus, for sure u of x comma t naught is 0 when x is not in the interval minus c t naught comma 1 plus c t naught. In other words, support of the function x mapping to u of x comma t naught is contained in the compact interval minus c t naught comma 1 plus c t naught. By the same reasoning the support of u of x t that is x going to u of x t is contained in the compact interval minus c t comma 1 plus c t. This example illustrates that if Cauchy data has compact support then the solution at every time instant will also have compact support. Now, let us like another example where phi is 0 but psi will be there. In the example 1 psi was 0, in example 2 phi will be 0 and psi has compact support say 0 1. Now, fix t in t naught, then D'Alembert the formula gives you this as a formula for the solution. Thus, for sure u of x t naught equal 0 when x is not in this interval, this is minus c t naught this is 1 plus c t naught. Okay. So, when x is not in this interval let us say x is here what happens 
x is bigger than 1 plus ct naught that means x minus ct naught is bigger than 1. What does this mean? If I take the interval 0 1 x minus ct naught is here. So, where will be x plus ct naught this side? What does this mean? Psi is supported in the interval 0 1 and x minus ct naught x plus ct naught which is the domain of integration is not intersecting 0 1 therefore the integral will be 0. Similarly, if x is here because if x is not in this interval means x is either to the right side of 1 plus ct naught like here or to the left side of 1 minus, CNA, minus ct naught. So, if x is like this what does it mean x plus ct naught is less than 0. What does that mean? x plus ct naught is here, where will be x minus ct naught? It will be here. Once again this interval on which we are integrating psi does not intersect with 0 1 therefore, this we have this u of x t naught is 0. In other words, the support of this function x going to u of x t naught is contained in this compact interval uh, that is what we have drawn the diagram and shown. No decay of solution this is another property that there is no decay when we are dealing with one dimensional wave equation. Fix x equal to x naught what is the meaning of decay? You stand at a point x 0 and look at u of x naught comma t as t varies at t, as t goes to infinity. So, for t naught bigger than this quantity we have x naught minus ct naught to be less than 0 and x naught plus ct naught bigger than 1. Therefore, what will happen is that 0 and 1 are here x naught minus ct naught and x naught plus ct naught will be here. If you recall the D'Alembert formula that will be an integral on this interval x naught minus ct naught x naught plus ct naught. So, if t is bigger than this t naught x naught minus ct naught x naught plus ct naught this interval will always contain the interval 0 1 on which psi is supported. Therefore, the solution is actually 0 to 1 psi s ds that integral part. So, 1 by 2 c will be there. So, we have this. This will be the solution. Let us see that. So, for t bigger than or equal to t naught this is a formula that comes from the D'Alembert formula. Now, RHS is a constant because as I told you this integral is from x naught minus ct to x naught plus ct, but x naught minus ct and x naught plus ct always contains 0 1 the moment t is bigger than or equal to t naught where t naught uh, is, is equal to this or bigger than this whatever equal to we can set. So, and it is non-zero if this is not 0 it all depends on what is the integral of psi on the interval 0 1. If that is not equal to 0 this is a non-zero constant for all t it means he, the solution does not become 0 or does not decay at e. it stays constant. So, we are in a big uh, for a big trouble if sound waves propagate according to 1 d wave equation because of this reason luckily they do not. So, d equal to 3 straight away we do the example for dimension 3 I assume speed is 1 c equal to 1 and phi equal to 0. So, solution to the Cauchy problem this we have worked out in an earlier lecture to be this. Now, consider an x with norm x equal to 2 and analyze what is it it says here I fix an x with norm x equal to 2 and I want to study u of x t as t goes to infinity what is the behavior. From the formula on the last slide we get u of x t equal to 0 for t less than 1 and for t bigger than 3. The function t going to u of x t is increasing in interval 1 2 decreasing in 2 3 and then becomes 0 after t greater than 3. This is what we have already learned in earlier lectures that in 3 dimension solutions for the wave equation there is a time up to which information has not reached that is up to 1 after that information has reached 
and after this information goes away 0. So, this is the uh, leading edge and trailing edge that is what we have seen even the pictures when the when we discussed Huygens principle we have discussed them. So, this behavior is very different from that for d equal to 1 we have just seen as illustrated by example 2. So, where the solution becomes non-zero after some time and remains constant that could be non-zero if integral of 0 to 1 of psi is not 0. Now, d equal to 3, c equal to 1, psi equal to 0. This Cauchy problem we have solved, solved in quotes, maybe a weaker notion of solution. We got a u to be like this. Once again, consider an x with norm x equal to 2. From the expression for solution, we get u is 0 of a t less than 1. It is a function is decreasing in 1, 3. In fact, this please verify all these uh, assertions by yourself by looking at the formula and then becomes 0 for t bigger than 3. Now, let us discuss propagation of singularities. Singularities travel along characteristics for d equal to 1. Let u be a solution to the homogeneous wave equation. Assume that for a fixed time t0, that means that at a fixed time t0, the solution u is not a C2, sometimes we just call smooth function at the point x0 t0. That means that formula for u has a trouble at x0 t0. u is given by this expression f of x minus ct plus g of x plus ct. u has a trouble at x0 t0 means f should have a trouble at x0 minus ct0 or else g should have a trouble at x0 plus ct0 or both. So, this means either f is not smooth at x0 minus ct0 or g is not smooth at x0 plus ct0. Why? Please justify this. If they are smooth, then you can conclude that u is smooth. Smooth, if you think it is continuous, it is continuous. If it is differentiable, it will be differentiable. If you think it is c2, it will be c2. Now, observe that there are two characteristic lines which pass through the point x0 t0. Recall that there are two families of characteristic lines for the wave equation. One member each passes through this point x0 t0, namely x minus ct equal to x0 minus ct0, x plus ct equal to x0 plus ct0. These are the two characteristic lines which pass through the point x0 t0. Now, in view of this formula for u, if f is not smooth at x0 minus ct0, then f will not be smooth at all those x and t such that x minus c t is equal to x naught minus c t naught. After all it depends on whether f as a function of one variable what happens to at a particular location x naught minus c t naught. So, therefore, whenever x minus c t is equal to x naught minus c t naught you have the same problem that is why it is not smooth. So, if g is not smooth at x naught plus c t naught you will not be smooth at all points on this line x plus ct equal to x0 plus ct0 for the same reason. This shows that the singularities in solutions to wave equation are traveling only along characteristics. Note that the nature of singularity also does not change that is what I said if f is not continuous you will not be continuous, if f is not differentiable you will not be differentiable, if f is not c1 you will not be c1 and so on. So, the nature of singularity does not change. Let us look at what happens in higher dimensions. Let u be a radial solution to the Cauchy problem in 3D where the functions phi and psi are also radial. What do you mean by radial? It means that the function depend only on the distance to the origin. So, phi of x will be a function of norm x that is there exists f and g such that phi x equal to f of norm x psi x equal to g of norm x. In other words, phi and psi are constant at all points of any sphere with center at origin. Since phi and psi are functions of norm x only, in other words, it depends on the distance of x to the origin, these functions are called radial functions. Because if you consider a sphere with the radius norm x, norm x is the radius, that is why these are called radial functions. 
let phi belongs to C3 of R3 and psi belongs to C2 of R3. These are the assumptions that we need uh, so that this problem will have a classical solution given by Poisson Kirchhoff formula. And that in turn means that small f and g they are C3 and C2 on this interval 0, comma infinity. So, we look for solutions u of xt which are radial that is u of xt is looking like u tilde of norm x comma t where u tilde is a function of r comma t r is in the interval 0 comma infinity and t is in 0 comma infinity once again so note that u tilde solves the cauchy problem which is given here it's very easy to derive in fact we have already done this before when we were trying to get solutions to the cauchy problem so this is in fact is what is called as radial Laplacian. Here f and g denote the extensions to r of the given f and g because the given f and g are defined only on the closed interval 0 comma open infinity whereas here we need r belongs to r because we are trying to pose a problem for r belongs to r and hence we extend the given fg to fg. So, we still use the same notations fg such that the extended functions are even functions and of course, f is in C3 and g is in C2. This requires that f dash of 0 and f double dash of 0 is 0. Similarly, g dash of 0 equal to 0. If f and g satisfy these conditions, then we can do this extension as mentioned here in this point. Assume these conditions. Now, defining v of rt equal to r into u tilde of rt we see that V satisfies the Cauchy problem for the 1D wave equation because under this change of the dependent variable the radial Laplacian will simply become dou 2 V by dou R square. So, this is the exactly one dimensional wave equation for V and these are the Cauchy data. V of R0 is RFR dou V by dou T at R0 is R times G of R. Now, using D'Alembert formula we conclude that U tilde of RT is given by this formula. So, of course, D'Alembert formula gives you V of RT, but once you know V of RT, you know what is U tilde of RT, you have to divide with R. Therefore, I divide with R, I get this formula for U tilde of RT. From now onwards, assume that psi is identically equal to 0. This means that there is no G, G is identically equal to 0. So, the formula simplifies in this special case to this formula U tilde of RT equal to 1 by 2 R into r minus t into f of r minus t plus r plus t into f of r plus t. Using L Hospital's rule and that the function f is even, we get u tilde of 0 comma t equal to limit of this quantity as r goes to 0, which using L Hospital rule turns out to be f of t plus t times f prime of t. This is yet another illustration of loss of derivatives because we have assumed f is C3, but now you have a f dash. So, that means it is just C2. So, u tilde will only be C2, u tilde of 0 t if it exists it will be only a C2 function. So, we have lost the derivatives. So, the formula u tilde of 0 t equal to f of t plus t times f prime of t suggests that something worse may happen when f is not a differentiable function. To find out what may happen let us consider the Cauchy data f of r given by this formula f of r equal to 1 if r is less than or equal to 1, 0 if r is bigger than 1. In other words, this uh, Cauchy data f takes the value 1 on the closed unit ball with center at 0 and outside the closed unit ball it is 0. The Cauchy data f of uh, r is a smooth function everywhere except when r equal to 1 at which the function is discontinuous. Since f is discontinuous at r equal to 1, we expect trouble for u tilde of r comma 1 for r near 0. This is because f prime of t appears in the expression for u tilde of 0 t and f prime of 1 is not meaningful because function itself is discontinuous. Indeed, u tilde of 0 1, let us compute, it is limit r goes to 0 of u of r 1. We do not know whether the limit exists or not, let us compute. 
So, what is u of r 1? I use the formula on the previous slides, this is a u of r comma 1. Now, let us simplify this expression after the limit. So, I take r common, I get f of r minus 1 plus f of r plus 1. I have written r minus 1 as 1 minus r because f is an even function. So, f of r minus 1 equal to f of 1 minus r. Now, what is remaining is minus f of r minus 1 which once again I write as minus f of 1 minus r and plus f of r plus 1 by 2 r. I have not done anything, I have just rearranged the terms in this expression to be this. Now, there is an r here, there is an r here, I can cancel these two r. So, I will separate this into two terms. This limit can be computed as limit of this plus limit of this provided these two limits exist. Now, we see what is the limit of this and what is the limit of this separately. The first term is just 1 by 2 because when I am coming to r from uh, the right side of 0, 1 plus r is always bigger than 1 and f is 0 if the argument is bigger than 1. So, this term is not there. What I have only is this term and that term f of 1 minus r, 1 minus r is always less than 1 and hence this is always 1, so 1 by 2. So, in fact, this quantity does not depend on r by the nature of the definition of the function f that we are considering. Then we have once again f of 1 plus r is 0, so I drop that term and I take this minus sign here, limit r goes to 0 plus of f of 1 minus r by 2 r. f of 1 minus r is 1, so I have 1. Now, I know this 1 by 2 r has no limit which is a real number, but loosely speaking this is going to infinity and half minus infinity is like minus infinity. So, there is no limit uh, here. So, after observing this limit equal to this minus this tells you that this limit exists if and only if this limit exists and we now just check this limit which is actually this limit that does not exist. So, u tilde of 0 1 is not only not meaningful, but also u tilde of r comma 1 goes to minus infinity as r goes to 0. Thus, u is unbounded near the point x t equal to 0 1, x equal to 0, t equal to 1. Thus, not only u of x 1 is undefined at x equal to 0, but also u of x 1 is unbounded as a x approaches the origin. The singularity in f which was initially confined to a two dimensional surface which is a unit sphere gets concentrated at a point which is now the origin as time goes to 1 that is at the time t equal to 1. This is called focusing of singularities and one also says that caustics have formed. This is in complete contrast with the nature of propagation of singularities in one space dimension. In one space dimension the solution was as good or as bad as the Cauchy data. Now, let us look at decay of solutions. Assume that the Cauchy data phi and psi have compact support. So, throughout our discussion on decay of solutions we assume that the Cauchy data is having compact support otherwise we do not expect such results. Solution to Cauchy problem in 1D is given by the Alembert formula which is given by this formula u of x t equal to phi of x minus c t plus phi of x plus c t by 2 plus 1 by 2 c integral x minus c t to x plus c t psi s t s. Even for a fixed x in R, a large time behavior of solutions, solutions given by this formula is dominated by the term involving psi. We saw this in one of the tutorials where we saw the point wise u of x t converges to a certain constant in that example. Phi never played a role there. So, due to this let us uh, assume phi equal to 0. Now, recall from lecture 4.6 and 4.5 the Poisson Kirchhoff formulae for the Cauchy problem in 2D and 3D which are given by this formula. Here the terms involving phi and psi behave similarly. Due to this 
we assume that phi is identically equal to 0. If phi is non-zero, the estimates get modified by addition of new terms featuring phi and its gradient. The guaranteed decay rate of the solution will not change. In this lecture, we are going to study decay properties of solutions to Cauchy problems for homogeneous wave equation across all the three dimensions 1, 2 and 3. We assume phi is 0 and Cauchy data has compact support. So, we are going to assume Cauchy data has compact support. No decay for d equal to 1, we already saw this in example 2. We do not expect decay of solutions to one dimensional wave equation unless psi satisfies the integral of our r equal to 0, in fact 0 to 1 in example 2 because we assumed psi is supported in 0 1. That is the content of example 2. So, theorem for decay for d equal to 3. Let psi be a compactly supported function with support in the ball of radius r with center origin. Then for t positive we have the following two estimates. If you notice here this is a uniform estimate because this will go to 0 as t goes to infinity right as t goes to infinity rhs goes to 0. So, this goes to 0 and the way it goes to 0 does not depend on x at all because this is valid for all x the right hand side does not depend on x. That is why this is called a uniform decay estimate. The only difference between these two estimates is that here we have supremum of psi, here we have integral of norm grad psi. So, whenever these two things are meaningful, we are assuming it has compact support. So, both are meaningful. So, we have these estimates. Of course, we do know that u of x t is actually 0 after some time for every fixed x, okay, but this is a uniform decay estimates. So, recall from lecture 5.5 that there were no sharp signal propagation for d equal to 2, but there is a decay of solution this is what we mentioned. Even though the solution u of x naught comma t does not become 0 eventually that means there is a time after which u of x naught t is 0 for d equal to 3 that does not happen here. Something becoming 0 eventually means after some time it is equal to 0 that is the meaning of saying eventually 0 that does not happen. Nevertheless, u of x naught comma t goes to 0 as t goes to infinity. In this lecture, we will state two results on dk without proof. Of course, even for d equal to 3, we have not given proof. For each fixed x naught, a dk estimate on u of x naught comma t, that is one uh, dk estimate. It is called point wise dk estimate because x naught is fixed and we are talking about the dk of u of x naught t. Second one is uniform decay estimate on u of x t. No proofs as the discussion is intended only for an exposure to decay properties as d varies. So, decay at a fixed x that is the point wise decay. As before psi will be compactly supported function now in a disc of radius r center at the origin in r2. Then for each fixed x there is a constant k which appears in this inequality that depends on x such that for all t this estimate holds. So, as t goes to infinity right hand side goes to 0 and therefore left hand side also, but this estimate depends on k and k depends on x. So, that is why it is called decay at a fixed x or point wise decay estimate. Uniform decay estimate same assumption as before on psi, then there exists a constant under t0 such that whenever t is bigger than t0, this estimate happens. If you are interested as t goes to infinity, uh, it is okay. This goes to 0, t goes to infinity means t will become bigger than t0 after some time, so estimate is valid. So, this goes to 0, therefore, this goes to 0. So, a uniform decay, but notice it is a root t here. In the point which decay it was 1 k by t. Now, it has become root t because of the uh, uniform decay. So, you are ha having a stronger statement here. So, you have a weaker estimate and that is what is true in general. So, let us summarize. Propagation of singularities for d equal to 1, the nature of singularities in the solution did not change from that of Cauchy data at different times. For d equal to 3, the nature of singularities in the solution could be drastically different from that of Cauchy data. This is to be expected even from the 
Poisson Kirchhoff formula where even if phi is uh, C3 and psi is C2 eventually the u you get is only C2. Therefore, if you fix a time t and look at u of x comma t naught for example, this is not C3 it is only C2. So, there is a loss of derivatives there. So, therefore, that is the reason behind this. Similar results are expected for d equal to 2. For d equal to 3, we observed that nice or weak singularities like discontinuities okay, in the Cauchy data propagate and result in stronger singularities in the solution which was found to be unbounded near the point x t equal to 0 1 in that example that we saw. Decay properties of solutions of wave equation for d equal to 1, 2, 3 we have compared d equal to 1 no decay, d equal to 3 there is a uniform decay of 1 by t type and for d equal to 2 we had a point wise decay and a uniform decay one was like 1 by t, one was like 1 by root t. Thank you.